Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the launch of the SNP's General Election Manifesto. I know it's a cliche, but this election is extremely important. We're not just picking our local MP. We're not just picking the next government. We're deciding the very future of our country. The UK's relationship with Europe and Scotland's right to determine its own future are on the ballot paper. And that's why it's so important that Scotland returns a strong team of SNP MPs to Westminster. Our message in this election is very simple. Let's escape Brexit. Rather than Boris saying get Brexit done, we want to get Brexit ditched. We want to kick the Tories out of Downing Street and put Scotland's future into Scotland's hands. In every single constituency in Scotland, the SNP are either the incumbents or the challengers. We are a voice for every part of our country. From the vibrant modern city of Glasgow, where we stand today, to our rural and island communities. Our candidates, and we have a fantastic team of candidates, are ready to take Scotland's voice to the heart of Westminster. And make no mistake, Scotland's votes could make an enormous difference in this election. Boris Johnson desperately wants a majority to impose Brexit on Scotland, and yet another Tory government that we didn't vote for. So if you want to deprive Boris Johnson of that majority, there's only one way to do it. Only the SNP can beat the Tories in Scotland. So let me introduce to you the, the woman who will lead us in that task, my friend, the leader of the Scottish National Party and the First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the launch of the SNP manifesto for the 2019 general election. Now, these events are becoming quite a regular feature, which must be quite puzzling for people here in Scotland. Five years ago, during the independence referendum, the leaders of the No campaign made up, of course, of the Westminster parties promised that if we voted no, we would get stability. But since then, the Westminster parties have delivered not stability, but constant chaos and three UK general elections. The promise that if we said no to independence, Scotland would stay in the EU has been broken and broken spectacularly. The promise that it was just a scare story to suggest that Boris Johnson could be Prime Minister has been broken and the promise that Scotland would be treated as an equal partner in the United Kingdom has not just been broken but completely shattered. The reality of Westminster control over Scotland is this. A right-wing Tory government Scotland did not vote for a Prime Minister in Boris Johnson, who is dangerous and unfit for office, Tory cuts to the Scottish budget, our National Health Service under threat from a Tory Trump trade deal, a power grab on the Scottish Parliament, children forced into poverty, and a disastrous Brexit deal that will hit jobs, living standards, and workers' rights. But there is worse to come, because unless Boris Johnson is stopped, this will just be the start. Brexit is nowhere near being done. The Tories have barely got going. They haven't even started trade talks yet. And because of Johnson's hardline position, there is every chance, every chance 
that the UK will leave the EU without a trade deal next year. That would be a catastrophe for jobs. And even if he somehow avoids that, his dream deal will be a nightmare for Scotland. It will take Scotland out of the single market, which is eight times the size of the UK alone, and out of the customs union, the world's biggest trading bloc. Compared with EU membership, that could cut Scotland's national income by around £9 billion by the end of the next decade. That is equivalent to £1,600 for every person in Scotland. Environmental standards and workers' rights will be at risk. And as night follows day, the Tories will sell out Scotland's fishing industry. The SNP, Scotland's Remain party, backs a new UK-wide referendum on EU membership. Jeremy Corbyn, incredibly, says that he is neutral on the issue of leave or remain. That means he is neutral on job losses, cuts to living standards, and the erosion of our rights. And of course, he would be happy to sit back and see Scotland taken out of the EU, even if there is a majority for Remain in Scotland, but not in the UK as a whole. The truth is that Brexit will dominate Westminster politics for years and years to come. And Scotland will pay a heavy price for the Tories' Brexit obsession and for Labour's neutrality, or to give it its proper description, Labour's woeful lack of leadership. So this election really, really matters. The future of Scotland is on the line. The opportunities for this and for future generations are at stake. We must not let Brexit rob our children's future. That means the kind of country we want Scotland to be is on the ballot paper. And at the heart of it all, I ask people in Scotland to consider this simple but fundamental question before you cast your vote. Who should decide Scotland's future? The people who live here or Boris Johnson? A vote for the SNP on December the 12th is a vote to escape Brexit. It is a vote to put Scotland's future in Scotland's hands. And crucially, it is a vote to deprive Boris Johnson's Conservative Party of a majority. You know, in this election, the SNP is the challenger to the Tories in every single seat that they hold. So the reality is this. In Scotland, only a vote for the SNP can defeat the Tories. By voting SNP, we can lock the Tories out of office. But we can do that only by voting SNP on December the 12th. And after this election, there is every chance that the SNP will hold the balance of power at Westminster. Now, unlike the Liberal Democrats, we will never, ever help the Tories into government. But we will... But we will be prepared to talk to other parties about forming a progressive alliance. Now, those parties, of course, are already looking to the SNP and to Scotland for inspiration. Many of the policies being promised in this election are already being delivered in Scotland by the SNP. The SNP has already abolished university tuition fees. We've protected the NHS from creeping privatisation. The SNP has not only protected free personal care for the elderly, we have now extended it to all age groups in Scotland. We've introduced free prescriptions. We've set up a genuinely progressive tax system which helps low paid and middle income earners. We are setting up a national investment bank. We've kept the water industry firmly in public hands. And while the Tories have been cutting police numbers in England, we've increased the number of police officers by more than 1,000. 
We've massively outstripped the rest of the UK in social and council house building. And we're helping with the cost of living. The SNP right now is investing in a huge expansion of early learning and childcare for vulnerable two-year-olds and all three and four-year-olds. This will be introduced in full next year, saving families up to four and a half thousand pounds per child per year. Uh, with limited powers, we've also established a social security system with dignity and fairness at its very heart. We're introducing a new £10 a week Scottish child payment for low-income households by the end of next year. That will lift 30,000 children out of poverty when it is fully implemented. So in government, the SNP is not just talking about transforming our country for the better. We are doing it every single day. This manifesto builds on that and it sets out how the power, the experience and the values of the SNP can put Scotland's interests front and centre in a progressive alliance to lock the Tories out of government at Westminster. It includes a clear demand for an end to austerity and a three-point proposal to increase Scotland's budget. Firstly, for our National Health Service. In government, we have shown our commitment in very difficult financial circumstances to the NHS. Despite Tory cuts since 2010, we've increased frontline health funding by 13% in real terms with more to come. In Scotland, the SNP is spending 136 pounds more per head on frontline health services than is the case in England. And this amounts to over £740 million more spending in Scotland compared to the UK. Now, of course, given our rural population, there should always be higher per capita spend in Scotland. However, if the next UK government raised health spending per head to the current Scottish level, it would not only substantially increase health investment in England, it would mean that by 2024-25, frontline investment in NHS Scotland would be £4 billion higher than it is today. At second, there must be a real end to austerity. The Tories, and let us never forget they did this with the help of the Liberal Democrats, have left the Scottish budget £1.5 billion lower in real terms than it was at the start of the decade. A potential UK government that wants our support must reverse that cut to our budget and ensure real terms growth thereafter. And thirdly, the UK must make right the cuts that Scotland has suffered. Over a decade of austerity, the cumulative price imposed in Scotland has been a massive 13.9 billion pounds. That's how much investment in our communities and public services Scotland has lost. And of course, the cost in human terms has been worse. That must be made right. A party seeking our support must be prepared to set out how they will repair the damage of a decade of austerity and put back money that has been lost. Remember, when the Tory government last needed a handful of votes from the DUP, they bypassed the Barnett formula to find money for Northern Ireland. And in the process, they denied Scotland around three billion pounds per year of investment. We say enough. It is time for Scotland to be treated fairly. In any post-election talks, the SNP will also demand that Scotland's NHS be protected from trade deals. We will introduce an NHS protection bill. This will guarantee that trade deals will not undermine the founding principles of the NHS nor open it up to profit-driven exploitation. And as a double lock, it will stipulate that no trade deal 
could come into force without the consent of our Scottish Parliament. Be in no doubt, no doubt whatsoever, a vote for the SNP in this election is a vote to stop the Tories selling off Scotland's National Health Service. SNP MPs will also demand an end to policies that are pushing people into poverty, debt and desperation. That means the two-child cap on tax credits and the associated rape clause must go. There must be... <laughs> there must be an end to the punitive benefits sanctions regime, the benefits freeze and a halt to the misery of universal credit. We will also stand up for fairer pensions. We will protect the triple lock and demand justice for WASPy women. We must never ever forget that the social security system is an expression of values and of solidarity. It helps those who are working hard but who struggle to make ends meet. The SNP will not sit by and watch it torn apart. In government, with the powers we have already, the SNP has been helping parents and families with a special emphasis on those all-important early years. The baby box, for example, provides practical help, but it is also a symbol of our values and of the kind of country we are seeking to build. It demonstrates that, as a society, we value each and every child in Scotland. The current system of maternity leave fails that social justice test. It is unfair and it works against those on the lowest incomes. It also means that parents, mainly mothers, often lose out on pension provision. We want to change that. Emulating policies successfully introduced in Nordic countries and in particular Iceland, we will propose legislation to increase paid maternity and paternity leave and also increase shared parental leave by 12 weeks to 64 weeks. The additional weeks will be specifically for fathers to encourage an increase in paternal leave. That would support mothers returning to work and it has been shown also to help fathers spend more time with their children after paternity leave has ended. Of course, with the powers of independence, we would have the ability to bring this into force. At Westminster, we will use our influence to press for these measures to be introduced. And this kind of policy is the hallmark of the SNP's approach to government. Practical action to improve people's lives as we build the fairer society we know is possible. On the climate emergency, the biggest moral issue that we face today, Scotland has the world's most ambitious emissions reduction targets already enshrined in law. We're already generating in Scotland three quarters of our electricity from renewables. Using our influence, SNP MPs will demand that the UK matches Scotland's ambition meets its Paris climate agreement responsibilities and sticks to future EU emissions standards. We will propose a green energy deal that will ensure green energy schemes get the long-term certainty needed to support investment. The UK Office for Budget Responsibility estimates that oil and gas revenues will be worth eight and a half billion pounds over the five years to 2023-24. That revenue the vast bulk of it, of course, from Scotland, should be put to work in building that transition to a greener, sustainable future. So we are proposing the ring fencing of oil and gas receipts, creating a net zero fund to help pay for the energy transition through investment in areas such as renewable energy, electric vehicles, and carbon capture utilisation and storage. And because the... And because those communities that currently host the oil and gas industry cannot be left behind 
in the necessary transition away from fossil fuels. We will demand that 12% of the fund, at least a billion pounds over five years, will go to a net zero industrial strategy to help diversify the economies of oil hubs like Aberdeen, Falkirk and Shetland. Now, Labour wants to impose an additional £11 billion windfall tax on Scotland's North Sea oil and gas industry, which kind of shows that for the Westminster parties, nothing ever really changes. Since the discovery of North Sea oil, the UK Treasury has pocketed more than £340 billion in revenues. While independent Norway has set up an investment fund, which is now worth $1 trillion, Labour and Tory Westminster governments have left Scotland with nothing. They claim that Scotland is not good enough or rich enough to be independent. But when they need to balance the UK books, they always seem to find billions of pounds of Scottish resources to do that job for them. Well, let me suggest today a much better way. You know, it's been estimated that the renewal of the Trident nuclear weapons system could cost more than £200 billion. That is a colossal waste of money. And weapons of mass destruction are immoral. So a key... The ESMP demand for our support will be the removal of Trident from Scotland and the saving of billions of pounds to be invested instead in our precious public services. <laughs> Until such time as Scotland is independent, we will also seek more powers for the Scottish Parliament. In particular, we want to see devolution of drugs policy to help tackle what is a public health emergency. And we will press for the devolution of employment law so that the Scottish Parliament can protect workers' rights, increase the living wage, and end the age discrimination of the statutory living wage. So let people be clear. A vote for the SNP in this election is a vote to reverse austerity and to protect our NHS. It is a vote for action on climate change, for a fairer country and for more powers for our Scottish Parliament. But in this election, as has happened so often in the past, Scotland is facing a democratic deficit. Brexit is just the latest, albeit very extreme example of that. You know, the Tories last won a general election in Scotland in 1955. In the last 60 years, there have been 16 UK general elections. The Tories in Scotland have not won a single one of these, not one. And yet, for 36 of those 60 years, Scotland has had to endure Tory governments that we did not vote for. That is a democratic outrage and that must change. <laughs> By voting SNP, we in Scotland can do our bit to get the Tories out of office and we should. But as we have learned from bitter experience, as long as we are governed by Westminster, our future can be imposed upon us. It is time to take Scotland's future into Scotland's hands. Now, I think people are becoming increasingly sick of hearing Jeremy Corbyn and Boris Johnson talking about not allowing the Scottish people to choose our own future. Well, I've got news for them. It's not up to you.
And you know what? It's not up to me either. It is a decision for the people of Scotland and for the Scottish Parliament. The democratically elected Scottish Parliament has agreed that people in Scotland should be given a choice over their future. An unelected Tory Westminster government has no right to overturn that decision. So an SNP victory in this election would be a clear instruction from the people of Scotland to respect Scottish democracy. So in this election, we can vote SNP to send the strongest message to Westminster, to Boris Johnson, and to every Westminster politician. There must be no Westminster veto over the right of the people of Scotland to decide their own future. And the SNP's message to any Westminster party seeking our support is this. If you cannot support this most fundamental of democratic principles, then the SNP cannot and will not support you. Today, Scotland does stand at a crossroads. We are facing two futures. In one future, we will be governed by Boris Johnson and taken out of the EU against our will. We will be at the mercy of an increasingly right-wing Tory party that will let nothing get in the way of their extreme Brexit vision. The right-wingers who are now running the show want to abandon EU standards, they want to cut Scotland's share of UK government spending, and they have shown that they will trample all over devolution if it gets in the way of Brexit. People in Scotland have the right to consider an alternative future, one in which Scotland's future is in Scotland's hands, not in Boris Johnson's hands. A future with Scotland as an equal partner with our closest friends in the rest of the UK and with the European Union. In an independent Scotland, we will always get the governments we vote for. The NHS will always be protected from a Tory Trump trade deal. Decisions about taxation and social security will be made by the Scottish Parliament. We will have a migration policy tailored to Scotland's needs. There could never be a rate clause or a bedroom tax forced on the people of Scotland against their will. Scotland is a country of extraordinary talent and resources. We are already one of the wealthiest countries in the world. We are rich in renewable energy. We have a world-class food and drink sector. Our tourism industry is booming. We're a world leader in the cutting edge industries of the future. We have more top universities per head of our population than any other country in the world, bar one. So we can be confident that a better future for Scotland is possible. We don't have to put up with the Brexit mess and what Westminster chooses for us. We don't have to put up with Tory governments that we don't vote for. We have the power at this election to change all that. So to people across Scotland, wherever you are, whatever your background, wherever you've come from, and however you voted in the past, let's join together. Let's stand up for our right to choose a better future. At this election, I am asking you to vote SNP to escape Brexit. Vote SNP to lock Boris Johnson's Tories out of office. Vote SNP to take power into your own hands, the hands of the people of Scotland. Vote SNP so that together we can build a better country for this and for future generations. Thank you very much indeed.